Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Good evening and welcome to the prayer meeting here at Scarborough SDA Church. Uh, this evening uh, we're going to be doing prayer meeting a little differently. Just a little different. Just a little differently. My name is Andrew Thomas. I am the assistant pastor here at Scarborough SDA Church. I am Wallen O'Connor. I am the lead pastor here at Scarborough SDA Church. And as Pastor Thomas has mentioned, we're doing it a little bit differently. Normally on Wednesday evening, we'd be downstairs in the chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, but today we're doing it online because of the uh, coronavirus epidemic that is going around mm -hmm. in, in our city. And we want to be safe. We want to be responsible right. as we continue to worship God. Uh, we may have the opportunity to worship God in any venue or format, mm -hmm. but the good thing about this is mm -hmm. they can close the building, but they can't stop our worship. Amen. And so Amen. we're here to worship, and we're under the topic. We've been going through the uh, 10 days of prayer and focusing on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And today we want to talk about uh, abiding in the presence of the Holy, of Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's right. Now, the format of this prayer meeting is going to be a little different than what we're used to. Mm -hmm. Normally we would have a segment, uh, we would speak, and then we'd break for prayer, mm -hmm. sing a song, speak again, break for prayer, sing a song, speak again, break for prayer, sing a song. But today we're going to be doing the speaking segment first, mm -hmm. after which we will invite you to enter into a season of prayer, three seasons of prayer, uh, focusing on the health and well-being of our family. Mm -hmm as well as our church family uh, worldwide, especially those who are dealing with uh, what's going on with the COVID-19 virus. And what else, Pastor Thomas? And then we're going to ask you to also t ask the Lord to intervene uh, where this virus is concerned and to um, put his healing hand in the midst of it all. Right. Um, and, of course, finally, to wrap up, we're going to encourage you to um, pray for your own personal needs. Right. Um, but also, I want to actually stretch, uh, stretch it that you're not just praying for your own personal needs, but that you pray for the needs of others. Right. Um, right. Other people need our prayers as well. Right. Um, Jesus was not selfish with his prayers. Whenever, a lot of times when he prayed, he was praying for other people. That's right. Um, so, so keep that in mind. All right. Let us pray. Father, we are inviting your presence in our midst. Mm -hmm. We may be concerned, Lord, with what's going on in the world around us, but we know, God, that we have the assurance that your spirit and your presence will be with us. Yes. And so as we enter into the study of your word, we pray, God, that you will open up our minds, open up our hearts mm -hmm. to be receptive of what you want to teach us. May we go deeper with you tonight. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. So when we think about, uh, we want to just jump straight into it. When we think about... Um, the Holy Spirit and uh, abiding in His presence. The question comes to mind, how do we abide in the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the triune God? Pastor Thomas, how is it possible uh, for me as a Christian today mm -hmm. to abide in the presence of God the Father, the Son, and especially the Holy Spirit? I think one of the key ways that we can abide in the, the triune God um, mm. and that's important, um, is simply spending time in Bible study. Right. Um, and not just opening the Bible and saying, let me choose a passage and let me just read it, but having Bible study with an open heart and an open mind. Right. Um, you know, we, we, we have to remember that Jesus is the Word of God. That's right. Um, John chapter uh, 1 verse 14 tells us that. You know what? Let's, let's, let's turn let's to it. Let's turn quickly. there right now, if uh, you don't mind. John chapter 1 and verse 14, as well as John chapter 14, verses 6 to 9. All right. Are you going to do John chapter 1, 14? I'll do 1, 14. Okay. I'll John do 14, chapter 1, then. 14. And <laughs> it's, it's a, a common text. I'm going to read from the King James Version. 
and it says, and the word was made flesh right. and dwelt among us, mm -hmm. and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that is Jesus. That's it. That is Jesus. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, John 14, uh, 6 to 9 tells us, Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Mm -hmm. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, mm -hmm. and it's sufficient for us. Jesus said, I have been with you so long, yet you have not known me, Philip. Mm -hmm. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus is the Word. That's right. And if we have seen Jesus, we've also seen the Father. Right. So we need to keep those two things in mind because we're talking about how to abide in the presence of, of the Holy Spirit and the Son of God and, and the Father. And yes. not only that, mm -hmm. if, yeah, as he says in John 14, 6 to 9, mm -hmm. if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, mm -hmm. which means that the way that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit works, if you see one, mm -hmm. you automatically see the other. That's right. And so you're never outside of the presence of God because God is always with his people. That's right. And so Jesus may not be here in physical body right now, mm -hmm. but his presence is with us through the Holy Spirit. The Father's presence is with us through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's presence is with us through the Holy Spirit. That's right. And so how we abide uh, in his presence is, as you're right, go with an open heart and an open mind. Mm -hmm. But it's also uh, important for us that when we pray, mm -hmm. and we pray asking God and the Father and the Spirit to, to, to lead us, mm -hmm. we pray to God not as a, a servant, um, mm -hmm. but we pray to God as a friend. And I think that's important, you mm -hmm. know, because the Holy Spirit is one who draws us near to God mm -hmm. and he softens our hearts mm -hmm. and he allows us, you know, the, the, to, to embrace the challenges that are, that are lying ahead. When we pray to God as a friend, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is there to comfort and to guide and to coax us mm -hmm. into everything that we need um, in this daily life. Because really and truly, Pastor Thomas, mm -hmm. you know, the, the devil... Has, has placed a yoke around us that seems as, as though we are powerless today. Such a um, lie. Such a lie. But the, when we pray, the, the devil's power mm -hmm. is broken. Mm -hmm. He becomes powerless, not us. That's right. Because through the Holy Spirit, we gain power, we gain victory, and we gain hope That's right. in Jesus' name. And it's important to know that the reason that the devil's yoke becomes powerless is because we have to remember that he knows Jesus. Right. He knows him personally. Right. And he knows the power um, that he packs. And uh, he fears him. Um, right. And he knows his end is, it is, near. It is near. It's near. It is going to happen. And so he, he fears the name of Jesus. He fears Jesus himself. And so when we put ourselves in the presence of of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The devil has no place. That's right. No place near us. So mm -hmm. so let's backtrack a little bit here, Pastor. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we talk about abiding in the presence of, you know, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We need to spend time regularly in Bible study. Correct. That's one. Correct. Two, we need to spend time in prayer. Mm -hmm. Three, we also need to obey God and what he says in his word. Um, so I can't just so I can't just read the Bible and go about my way and do whatever I want to do. Mm, no, no. But let me put it this way: mm -hmm. if you're hungry, mm -hmm. is it enough to go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and stand outside? <laughs> <laughs> Not much will happen then. I Not much will you. happen. Yeah, yeah. Is it enough for us to go to the restaurant, to be seated at the table, mm -hmm. to order the food, mm -hmm. read the menu and order the food, mm -hmm. and have it sit down in front of us? You've got to eat. There's an element <laughs> yes, of yes. engaging yeah. that needs to happen. That's right. And for us to abide in the presence of the triune God, mm -hmm. the element of engaging 
is our obedience to God and His Word. Mm -hmm. uh, too often we pray and we read Scripture and we, we, we try to do it on our own mm -hmm. and we do it. It's not enough to just pray. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just read. Mm -hmm. But we got to put all three components together. Pray, read, obey. Mm -hmm. Spend time with God. Mm -hmm. um, because that's the only way to really gain inner peace. The only way to know God's will for our life is to spend time in prayer, mm -hmm. in Bible study and in obedience. Now that doesn't mean, or rather should I ask, does that mean that I will no longer sin anymore? Ooh, does good it mean question. that I will never make any more mistakes? I've read, I know that I should not lie, or and I've read that I should not gospel, my Bible study, not gospel, gossip rather. Well, I'm glad um, you read right. it because <laughs> gossip. We need so, to spread the gospel, not exactly, gossip. Exactly, that's right. <laughs> so I've read these things, and yet I find myself still doing them right right um, does that mean that I'm not close to the heart of God or, or, or what does it mean that I'm no longer obeying the Word of God like what um, does it mean like if I've read it does it mean that I'm no longer going to commit that type of a sin anymore absolutely not right we gotta we gotta understand that we are on a, a growth process with God Amen. Uh, just like how a child, I don't know any woman that has given birth to a six-foot baby. Hmm. Um, it may feel like it, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> they have not literally given birth to a six-foot baby. Right. Uh, the baby, when it is born, the infant, um, is dependent upon the mother for, for nutrients, nutrients mm -hmm. nourishment, mm -hmm. uh, for protection and growth and safety and everything. Mm -hmm. So are we dependent on God? Um, when, we, when we start following him and his word. Mm -hmm. And as we grow, we get bigger, we get stronger, we know more things, just like a regular child. Mm -hmm. But it's all about really that dependency. And just like a child, sometimes when you're learning to walk, you stumble and you fall. Um, just because a child falls once doesn't mean that the child will never walk again. And we, we don't throw away the towel and the baby with the bath water mm -hmm. and say, this child is never going to walk, so we're going to give up. We're going to put him, strap rollers to his, his, his legs or whatever and <laughs> send them on down the road. Right. But instead, you know, we, we, we work with the child and we train them and we encourage them and we give them hope that if they continue to go, mm -hmm. if they continue down the right path, they will eventually walk and begin to even run and begin to even soar um, as they continue to develop and they grow. And the same way it is in our spiritual walk and our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. When I start following God and His Word, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm, uh, we've, I've been pastoring for 16 years and I still make mistakes. I get you. But the Bible talks about in Proverbs that a righteous man falls seven times mm -hmm. but gets back up. A wicked man falls once and never rises. So Mercy. God wants us to continue to go. And even though he knows we're going to stumble, mm -hmm. he knows we're going to fall. Mm -hmm. He knows we're going to falter. We get back up. We dust ourselves off and continue down the path with him because it's the Holy Spirit who nurtures us to get up. The Holy Spirit who nurtures us to say, you know what? You fell because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Let's avoid it this time. And as we go along this, this journey with him, mm -hmm. we begin to figure out and find out that the things I used to do, I want I to do, do no, no more. more. And if we develop and we grow in our relationship uh, with him. So it is possible, and that's the, the beauty of abiding in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is that you may not be perfect. Right. But you can still abide in his presence. Right. Because Jesus gave his life and died for us so that our sins can be forgiven. We may fall and we say, Lord, we're asking you to forgive us. And, and we're and we're 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 in a constant walking and growing right. relationship with him. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna say and add, you know, Pastor Thomas, mm -hmm. it's 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 interesting in, in the the Christian world. Um, there's a push and a swing for us to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. And it puts a lot of undue pressure on people mm -hmm. when they falter. <laughs> and they're very hard on themselves. Mm -hmm. um, we're not advocating in any way, shape, or form that anyone should go out and willfully sin. I mean, I'm not going to go and rob a bank because the church needs X amount of dollars. Right? right? Mm -hmm. God's not pleased with that. Mm -hmm. But he wants me to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And he wants me in my walk with him to know that I will stumble and I will fall. Mm -hmm. And that's why he, the loving God, is there to catch us when we fall and to help us back up and to continue along our path. 
um, it's, it's interesting how, you know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit leading us, there's a lot of folks who don't even believe that the Holy Spirit is God. Right. And, well, um, yeah. And so yeah. when we're talking about abiding in the Holy Spirit, they're sitting back and they're thinking to themselves, well, why should I even believe in the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible talks about Father, it talks about Son, mm -hmm. but not so much on the Holy Spirit. But mm -hmm. if you could find for me uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 21. Um, I, want to, I want us to look at how important the Holy Spirit is in this whole process. Because in order to abide in the, or with the Holy Spirit, you first have to acknowledge His presence and acknowledge uh, the path that He's starting you on. Agreed. So 2 Peter uh, 1 21. Uh, what does it say there, Pastor? It says, for the pro and again I'm reading from the, the King James Version, it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, uh -huh. but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's so, extremely important. Wow. Okay, so um, let me unpack that. Or can you unpack that for me? Well, uh, it's, I, I, is there much to unpack? I mean, the fact old that lot. Um, prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, it's literally, this is not something that men decided to sit together and make up. But hmm. God, through the Holy Spirit, spoke to men and inspired them to put the very words together in this in this book in the Holy Bible um, th these men were moved mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit now did the Holy Spirit give them all the exact words to say not necessarily but he gave them the the concept that he was that he wanted to convey and what's interesting Thought about this holy the, this the Bible is that um, no matter how many years no matter how many different authors, no matter uh, the fact that many of these authors never met, that the same thread of the fact that Jesus Christ um, loves us, cares for us, died for us, rose for us, and is coming back for us, it flows from Genesis through to Revelation. Right. Um, and so we have nothing to, to fear or we have nothing to worry about um, when it comes to depending mm. on the Word of God. That's right. Abiding in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Bible study, we can rest assured um, that we will grow daily in our relationship with Jesus. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I want to read for us uh, Luke chapter 11, verses 9 uh, to 13. I hope you will bear with me yeah, sure. a little bit with that. That's fine. It says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the sure. door shall be opened to you. Mm -hmm. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, mm -hmm. and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. That's right. If the son asks for bread from any father among you, <laughs> will you not, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent mm -hmm. instead of the fish? Mm -hmm. If he asks for an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? Mm -hmm. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, mm -hmm. how much more will your heavenly Father mm -hmm. give the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to those who ask him? Mm -hmm. You know, God is ta talking about here, Christ is saying, you know, we being sinful beings, love to give our children good gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a father of two beautiful children. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Uh, beautiful baby girl and a beautiful baby boy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to get into the fact that my son loves his mother more than me, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> the, the fact is, when my children ask, when they say to me, Daddy, I'm hungry, mm -hmm. I don't go out and I don't give my kids a stone to eat. Mm -hmm. I don't put ketchup and mustard and mayo on it and give them the stone. Mm -hmm. But instead I go and find food for them to eat mm -hmm. uh, because I want their well-being and their well their well-being is at the center of my heart mm -hmm. uh, because I love them. Mm -hmm. When we ask God for the Holy Spirit, imagine the joy that comes over God when you're asking Him for for him, yes, <laughs> right. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit, your presence. Mm -hmm. God gets excited. God gets energetic. God gets so overwhelmed with happiness and pure joy mm -hmm. that He willingly gives the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks Him. Mm -hmm. And so, the same Spirit who 
uh, inspired God's word is the same spirit that God wants us to ask for. You cannot abide in the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. unless you're asking God for the Holy Spirit. That's right. And as you mentioned um, about how much of a joy um, that, 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 that God feels when we ask him for the Holy Spirit, which yeah. is a great thing to ask for. Yep. Um, Romans chapter 8, um, mm -hmm. verse 26, um, talks about when we ask for the Holy Spirit, what, what he does for us. I, I'm, I'm going to read here, I'm going to read the King James Version. Romans eight twenty six. it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession mm. for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. I'm going to simply break it down. With this. this scripture is simply saying, and this, is, this baffles me and I love it. Um, you pray. Whatever words come out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you may not think that they are as impactful as they should be. Okay. But the Holy Spirit reads our heart wow. and so he is able to take our prayer and transform it to what it you 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 wanted Mercy. it to be see and i'm saying that because for two reasons number one your prayer does not need to sound perfect mm. your prayer just needs to be a prayer God takes care of the rest. God's amazing. God is He's amazing. I used to think my wife could read my mind. And she almost can. I'm still, can. Not, I'm still I'm, not convinced I'm, that, <laughs> that she doesn't read my mind. I'm right. Um. <laughs> but to know that the Holy Spirit, not only just he, not mm. only does he read my heart, but he transforms my prayer oh, so that Jesus. even if I am not able to say everything right. to, that I need to say right and perfect and intellectual and eloquent the Holy Spirit says so Andrew I got you I know exactly what you're saying let me bring it before the Father's throne um, yeah so Pastor T yeah. mm -hmm. are you telling me mm -hmm. that my cousin who has cancer mm -hmm. and it devastates me to my core mm -hmm. and I start my prayer and all I can muster is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And tears are flowing down my cheeks. Mm -hmm. Or even I'm in need of his prayer. I, I need a breakthrough. I am sick or my children are are walking away from God or, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's breaking my heart. Mm -hmm. And I don't even have the words to utter. But all I can do is groan and, and, and moan and... Maybe, maybe mumble out the word. Are you telling me that, that the Holy Spirit takes that, mm -hmm. the, the intentions of my heart, mm -hmm. the groans that come from the, 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 the depth, the bowel, the belly, the deep core of me, mm -hmm. and he interprets that mm -hmm. and translates it into his own language right. that only he, the triune God, can understand. Are you telling me that's what God does? That's what God does. That is what God does, and that's what makes him God. Mm. It's not about um, any ritual. It's not about where you pray. It's not about, even about how you pray. Because you can be standing, you can be uh, eyes open, you could be kneeling. That is not what determines if God hears your prayer or not. It is your heart wow. that God reads for your prayer. Look and that. so um, that's what makes him so, so he, the, and he's God. He's the only one who can do something so powerful. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, when I think of, I am, I am literally overwhelmed mm. by the depth of love God has for me. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit, you know, and I read in his word, like, you know, when Christ left, he sent the Holy Spirit for us. Mm -hmm. He sent him not just as a comforter, not just as a guide, but he sent him as a friend mm -hmm. to walk on this journey. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that accountability partner mm -hmm. um, who's able to translate how you think, mm -hmm. how you feel, mm -hmm. what you need to say, what you ought to say. Mm -hmm. uh, 
We want to thank God for the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You know, um, our time is winding down. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been fun. we got to do this again. Absolutely. Um, uh, just want to remind folks that after this segment, we want to ha have you engage in singing a song, whatever the song may be. It may be a hymn. It may not be. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sing a verse of a song uh, that uplifts you and puts you into the presence of God. And we want you to have a segment of prayer, uh, praying for your health and well-being of yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. We want you to have a segment of prayer, praying for the church family worldwide mm -hmm. um, as we deal with this crisis. Pray a prayer uh, that God would intervene during this crisis. That's right. And we also want you to lift up before God whatever petitions you may have. Mm -hmm. Um, understanding that as you pray, the Holy Spirit interprets, mm -hmm. God understands, mm -hmm. and he always hears the prayers of his children. So, Pastor Thomas, as we, we, we wind down, I just want to leave um, this note uh, as we close. Um, number one, I want to remind everybody to remember our prayer requests uh, for today. As we finish our, our devotion study, uh, we want you to choose a song, whatever song. It may be a hymn, it may not be. Um, but we want you to remember to pray for the health and well-being of your family. Mm -hmm. We want you to remember to pray for uh, the church family worldwide as mm -hmm. we deal with this um, crisis. And as our churches are closing, some of us for the first time in our church's history. Mm -hmm. uh, we want you to remember to pray for God to intervene uh, during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And we want you to pray for whatever uh, desires you may have whatever petitions you may have uh, before God, remembering that the Holy Spirit interprets your prayer yes. and he makes intercession on your behalf to God. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to close with this passage of Scripture in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Even though things are going on and it's crazy around us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, again Amen. and receive you unto myself, mm -hmm. that where I am, there you may be also. So as we battle through life's crisis, mm -hmm. through life's moments, understand that God has a better place in store for us. Mm -hmm. And if we are faithful, and we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, one day we will see him face to face. So don't worry. Stay tuned with God and be happy. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, I also want to use this opportunity to remind us uh, to tune in for Sabbath school uh, on Sabbath morning at about 10 o'clock. We're going to be doing Sabbath school a little different as well. It's going to be through teleconference. And so I want to publicly share with you uh, what the teleconference number is and the PIN code. We'll also be sharing it on various group chats um, that we're in via WhatsApp. But the teleconference number is 1-647-946-8253. That's 1-647-946-8253. Five, three. And once you call that number, they're going to ask you for a PIN. And the PIN number is 516-1942. That's 516-1942. We'd like to thank you for joining us uh, this evening. And it is our hope uh, that uh, something we said, something we shared, will inspire you to get into the Word and to study it for yourself. We encourage you to abide with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. At this time, I'm... Oh, yes, that's true. I want to also remind you uh, about the um, live streaming that will be taking place also for Sabbath uh, afternoon, or I should say the divine service. Um, it is our plan to start at 11 a.m. sharp. We will be having, by God's grace, some music. We'll be having the Word of God. Pastor O'Connor will be sharing a Word of God for us. Should I? I don't know if I should give them a title yet. I won't. I won't. I will not. I will leave it what for you to enjoy. What shall we do? That is the title of this Sabbath sermon. Come and experience the Word of God live here at Scarborough SDA Church. 
At this time, I'm going to invite us to close in prayer, and we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Good evening. Thank you so much, Lord, for uh, the Word of God, for outlining to us um, in detail not only the fact that you love us, that you care for us, mm. that you died for us, that you rose for us, and that you're coming back for us, but that even while we are here, we can abide in your presence. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us prayer. And we ask, Lord, that we will use our relationship with you to share with a community that needs to know you more. During this time, Lord, where we have uh, more time to actually be alone and to be in your presence, may we grow with you and our relationship grow with you. And may we share, share you with those who don't know you yet. Bless us, Lord, as we grow and abide in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.